So um, we have a panel of three uh, folks who are going to be talking about community um, solar, community group net metering uh, solar in New Hampshire and Vermont. And the first is Kate Epson, who is Executive Director of New Hampshire Sustainable Energy Association. You just heard from her, a statewide independent member-based nonprofit that provides education and advocacy to advance clean energy in New Hampshire. Previously, she was an analyst in the New Hampshire Public Utilities Commission. Thank you, Bob. Okay, just to get a quick survey, you're all pretty sophisticated in this room, so can you just raise your hand if you have a basic understanding of net metering? Okay, great, so I won't spend any time with that. Um, so in New Hampshire, New Hampshire has a bit of a unique type of group net metering law. It's also known as virtual net metering. Um, it came out of our individual net metering statute where any single entity could net meter any system up to 1,000 kilowatts. And then um, through SB 98 in 2013, we expanded um, those systems to include group um, net meter projects. And what this means essentially is you can have any number of members um, uh, connected with a single host system through a contract and you could share in the cost and or benefits of, of the production of that system. And you know, there are the boring RSA numbers and the bill numbers if you wanna look into that more deeply. Okay, so, so a, a basic overview of how it works in New Hampshire, and just to back up for one second as well, um, community solar projects can be done through group net metering in New Hampshire, but they don't all need to be done that way. So. Group net meter projects are a subset of community solar projects. Um, there, are there are various models that you can undertake when doing these kind of projects, and it may not actually be to your advantage to group net meter it, depending on who the investors are, who the members are, and what the on-site load is, and various factors like that. And we'll get into that a little bit, but not, not too much, because the other presenters, I think, will go over the models as well. Um, so, so in New Hampshire, if you're going to go the group net metering route, you need to be customers all of the same distribution utility, and you have to be taking their default energy service. So that basically means you haven't signed up with some sort of competitive supplier like ENH or North American Power. Um, you're just taking that default energy straight from your distribution utility. Um, and there's no limitation on group members and you don't have to be contiguous. So, you know, you could all be PSNH now, Eversource customers from all over the state, but you just all have to be taking their default energy supply. Um, there are a lot of different models you can use with group net metering in New Hampshire. Um, I think there are several of you here that have already undertaken some of those. Raise your hand if you're in New Hampshire and you've either already done one or you're in the midst of doing one of these types of projects, so look around and see who they are. Um, they're going to be your really your true experts on this because they've slogged through the nuts and bolts over, I'm imagining, many months, if not years. Um, you can structure an LLC, um, meaning you can have different investors and then the tax benefits will flow to the individuals, so you can capture that tax equity. Um, you can have a co-op. Um, you can have a third-party developer where you just um, enter as a member to offer up your electrical load, essentially, for, for some, sort of, um, some sort of benefit, however you decide as a group. Um, and then you can also do it just as an individual, and you may have multiple meters on a property, or as a town with multiple meters in your municipality. Um, here's how it really gets different in New Hampshire. You don't get to share the credits of that production across the group members. You get a check uh, that's cut to the host, the group host, once per month from the distribution utility. And I'm gonna get a little bit more into how that works in a future slide. So that can make a, a big difference in the project. The, the margins on these kind of projects are fairly slim in New Hampshire. We don't have very lucrative incentives in other ways through SREX. Um, we do have rebate programs. Um, so you, you really need to capture all of those possible incentives and the tax equity um, and figure out what, what's the business model that's gonna make the project finances work. 
Um, but there's been, a, there's been a lot of frustration in going through the rulemaking process in New Hampshire, so I want all of you to know that this is really the first go-round. You know, the utilities have obviously, they've fought these type of expanding policies very, very strongly, and so the laws can change. For example, you know, we had a bill that was trying to expand the cap on net metering in New Hampshire and to bring back that bill credit sharing opportunity. And it wasn't successful this time, but it doesn't mean it can't be successful in the future. So, so we, can, we can keep improving this law. Um, okay, so going back to the credits, the, the payment for these systems is gonna, going to go to a group, the group host. So that's essentially where you build the solar system and the meter in which that interconnects with. That's going to be your group host. And then you have the members, and you are essentially going to get your credits based on the system size. And if it's a, if it's a medium to small system, 100 kW or smaller, you're going to get full retail. That's all KWH-based charges. And you'll get that as um, a check, the value of what that is once per month. And then that has to be distributed as defined in the contract fr from the host to the members. Now, if the system is larger um, than 100, up to one megawatt or up to 1,000 kilowatts, then you're really only going to get the value of the default energy supply charge. So you, 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 the project economics start to decrease as you get larger here. Um, you know, as most of you probably know, the rates went up dramatically in New Hampshire this winter. I think some of the rates for Liberty went up to as high as 15 cents for the energy supply charge. Um, but then in the summer, it generally drop, drops to around seven or eight. So, so it will vary also based on kind of what the market is, is bearing and, and then what the PUC approves for rates. Um, so keep that in mind as well. And, um, and then there's this transfer payment. And another very important consideration here is that this could be taxable income. Since it's not as a bill credit share, um, you have to look at is if that income coming into the host and then being distributed to members is considered taxable. Not in New Hampshire, we don't have an income tax, but federal taxable. <laughs> um, and then there's a true up, because um, the way you have to structure these projects is the, the historical load of all the members in the host have to roughly match the annual production of the system. So if, you, if that, if that um, production is much more than that annual historic load, there's going to be a true up, and you may actually have to pay some of that back to the utility. Um, and if not, then you don't. <laughs> so be careful about how you size these systems. <laughs> okay, so getting to the agreement, a, a lot really, a, a lot rests on how this agreement is going to work between the hosts and the members. And um, it depends on how you structure the members and then um, what the legal needs are and the revenue needs are of the members. Um, there, there's a structure that's being deployed right now in New Hampshire that essentially is a third party developer taking on members um, as their load and then the members don't have to put anything up front. They don't make an upfront investment, but they get a discount um, on some percentage order or some you know, cent per kilowatt hour discount um, in the form of a check in, over some period over the course of the year. So, so you just have to, um, that has to be very explicitly written out in these member and host agreements because disputes could very quickly arise legally if um, a party is feeling that they were not getting what they signed up for. So I would advise um, to have these contracts re reviewed by a, by a professional. Um, this is as boring as a TPS report, but I put the links in here so you can easily find them. You have an application and an annual report that you need to fill out. They're linked to the Public Utilities Commission website. I won't spend any time on it. That's where you get it. Um, I think I, I've kind of gone over some of these. It's, it's really important to consider the size based on what your reimbursement rate is. It's really important to consider the membership load versus the production amount of the system. Um, and it's really important to understand how members can come and go from this group so you can keep that production matched well with the load and you don't get penalized at the, at the end of the true up period. 
Um, and then also these, the nexus of considerations of the shared costs versus the shared benefits of the group are essential. I won't get into the technical aspects. Um, that's basically governed by interconnection rules in New Hampshire, um, also on the public utilities website. So um, happy to take any questions. I think we're saving them till the end, but thank you very much. And, and one last um, note, we, it's, it's, um, it's similar to what you've heard referenced that's in Vermont. We have developed NHSEA, a group net metering um, guide and community energy guide. It has um, member templates, it has PPA templates, and it has a lot of the different model considerations in it. It's, it's quite long. Um, email me if you're interested in um, having it and I can send you over the PDF. Thanks.